uh, up to the point of the presentation that's being done. Great. So good morning, everyone. I know we started a very early morning meeting, but this is because we have persons from uh, Geneva, Switzerland, joining us this morning from the WIPO, which we're very glad to have here with us. So welcome. We today are having a webinar on innovation and economic resilience, opportunities for Jamaica. This is being organized by the World Intellectual Property Organization in cooperation with the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, which is an agency of the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, and also in partnership with the Inter-American Development Bank. My name is Kayla Grant. I'm a senior sector associate at the IDB, and I will be your moderator today. Um, in the interest of time, I will have our speakers that will be conducting the opening ceremony remarks acknowledge our very important persons in the room. So without further ado, um, we will um, we will go ahead. I'll then provide a bit of housekeeping rules, but I will now hand it over to our first speaker to welcome everyone here today. And that would be Miss Lily Claire Bellamy, who is the Executive Director at the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office in Jamaica. Miss Lily Claire. Thank you so much. Good morning. Thanks for that um, introduction, Kayla. It is my pleasure this morning to join you for this really important and significant activity. Jamaica was quite pleased when we saw our movement on the Global Innovation Index. But before I get into that, allow me to acknowledge the Assistant Director General of the World Intellectual Property Organization in charge of intellectual property and innovation economic ecosystem sector, Marco Alleman. Um, also, our Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Honorable Audley Shaw, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Sancia Bennett Templar, and this is Mrs. Bennett Templar's first um, activity with the World Intellectual Property since she joined the Ministry as a Permanent Secretary. So we're really happy to welcome her and we're so glad that she can join us for this event this morning. I'd like to acknowledge also Lorenzo Escondar, Chief of Operations at the Inter-American Development Bank, Country Office in Jamaica. Dr. Charo Watson, who is the Executive Director at the Scientific Research Council, which is an agency of the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology. Harold Davis, the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Jamaica Business Development Corporation representing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Dr. Richard Brown, who is the Director of Research Services Sector Development, Technical Assistance and Capacity Building, Patricia Lewin, who is the Senior Technology Officer for the National Commission for Science and Technology. And I'd also like to acknowledge Carl Simpson, who has responsibility for the Caribbean at the World Intellectual Property Organization, and our very own um, Dr. Marcus Goff, Deputy Director Legal Counsel, who has provided yeoman service for this activity this morning. The Global Innovation Index is an important and significant um, achievement for Jamaica. And as a small island development state, we recognize the importance of research and development and how innovation can help to propel us and to achieve our goals and objectives on the Vision 2030. The objective of Vision 2030 is to have Jamaica achieve first world status by the year 2030. Um, I'd like to at this time acknowledge the role that the government of Jamaica has played in tying intellectual property with a number of research and development institutions. The Jamaica Intellectual Property Office has membership on the boards of the National Commission on Science and Technology, the Scientific Research Council, and the International Center for Environmental and Nuclear Sciences. We also should acknowledge the work that the World Intellectual Property Organization has done to foster and facilitate our movement on the Global Innovation Index. This has manifested in a number of ways, but perhaps the service level agreement that we signed at the WIPO to establish technology innovation support centers in Jamaica is one of the significant matters that the IP office and WIPO have worked closely together. 
as a result of the Technology Innovation Support Centers, we have an active TISC at the University of the West Indies located here, the Mona campus in Jamaica. We, are, we signed an agreement with the University of Technology, so they will have an active TISC. And we're working closely with a number of tertiary institutions in Jamaica to roll out the Technology Innovation Support Centers. The importance of the Global Innovation Index cannot be stressed enough. And I would like to thank the WIPO for their assistance and also to recognize the role of the government of Jamaica in tying the IP office so closely with a number of R&D institutions as we seek to propel and to make us move even higher on the Global Innovation Index. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us and I look forward to a fruitful discussion. Thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you so much, Ms. Lily Claire Bellamy for, for your opening. I will now hand it over to Mr. Lorenzo Escondior, who is the Chief of Operations at the IDB office in Jamaica. Mr. Escondior. Thank you, Kayla. Good morning, everyone. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Mr. Osley Shaw, Permanent Secretary in the Minister for Industry, Investment and Commerce, Ms. Sanja Bennett, Assistant Director, General IP and Innovation Ecosystem Sector in WIPO, Mr. Marco Aleman, Executive Director, Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, Ms. Lila Claire Bellamy, Executive Director, Scientific Research Council of AMSET, Dr. Shara Watson, Deputy CEO, Jamaica Business Development Corporation, Mr. Harold Davis, Director of Research Service Sector Development, Technological Assistance and Capacity Building Support, Mr. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Dr. Richard Brown, Senior Technology Officer, National Commission for Science and Technology, Ms. Patricia Lewin. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings. It is my pleasure to join you today virtually as we discuss the importance of innovation for economic resilience and the opportunities that hold for Jamaica. Over the past two decades, Jamaica has struggled with economic growth, which has been aggravated by the pandemic. The low growth is partly attributed to declining productivity. In order to improve productivity growth, innovation is key. Still, there are a number of challenges that firms are facing pursuing innovation, especially as related to finance. Governments such as Jamaica realize that in order to build resilience, there is, no, uh, there is a need for greater investment in innovation and a support ecosystem for enhancing innovation activities. This need for innovation is even more present given the global context of rapid technology uh, change were tended for the fourth industrial revolution, such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, blockchain, et cetera, that are emerging and disrupting the production, commercialization, and distribution of goods and services. The IDB is very proud of its partnership with the government of Jamaica and the Development Bank of Jamaica in the Boosting Innovation, Growth, and Entrepreneurship Ecosystem Program, also known as BIGI. The BIGI is a loan operation in Jamaica that is tapping into innovative and dynamism of the private sector in Jamaica to drive growth. The program is a scale up of a support provided through the Complete Caribbean Partnership Facility, a private sector led program sponsored by Canada, the UK, and CDB, and in partnership with the IDB Lab program. The program targets firms at all, all the stages of the life cycle, from the early idea phase to startups. Um, with the high growth potential to establish SMEs that face challenges to innovate and grow. It's encouraged use of resources more efficiently through the adoption of new technology, including emerging technologies such as Internet of Things, big data, artificial intelligence, et cetera, and innovation in productive process and product services offerings. Projects with potential to solve problems in critical areas such as climate change and gender inclusion and diversity are also being promoted. The program includes mentoring, capacity building, strengthening incubators, facilitators, academia, and technological transfer actors, and grant financing. The IDB is also providing technical cooperation grant to support its beneficiaries. Knowing that intellectual property is a major value driver in startups and firms, and that the creation, protection, and utilization of IPRs play an important role in the national innovation ecosystem and in promoting national competitiveness, one such as technology corporation is supporting the JIPO to strengthen the intellectual property ecosystem to increase innovation, competitiveness, and growth in Jamaica. Data is crucial 
it's critical to measure and to better understand and evaluate the performance of innovation ecosystem. The Global Innovation Index has been a key tool for Jamaica in its ability to measure and thus assess how we can strengthen the innovation ecosystem. Most notably in 2020, Jamaica performed about expectation for its double development as speaking to the potential of the Jamaica. I commend Jamaica for its performance and continued effort in building an innovative and resilient economy. I hope that this meeting today will let us to improve our capabilities for measuring and evaluating the IP and innovative ecosystem. We look forward to working with the WIPO and the government of Jamaica on this very important topic. Thank you very much and good morning. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lorenzo. And now we, I would like to introduce our next and final speaker for this morning's open ceremony remarks. That is Mr. Marco Aleman, who is the Assistant Director General of IP Innovation Ecosystem at the World Intellectual Property Organization based in Geneva, Switzerland. Welcome, Ms. Marco. Kayla, many, many thanks. And, um, and I'm very glad. Let me start. Um, uh, thanking organizers and authorities involved in the organization of this innovation and economic resilient opportunity for Jamaica seminar um, is a great occasion for WIPO to be with you all today and to exchange a uh, few ideas around the role of innovation in economic uh, development and in particular the role that IP can, can play. So my, my first word are addressed to the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Mr. Audrey Shaw, uh, to the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Mrs. Sancia Bennett Templer, to Mr. Lorenzo Escondor, Chef of Operation Inter-American Development Bank, to my dear friend, Lily Claire Bellamy, Executive Director, Jamaica Intellectual Property Office. To Dr. Shara Watson, Executive Director, Scientific Research Council, Agency of the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology. To Mr. Harold Davis, Deputy CEO, Jamaican Business Development Corporation. To Dr. Richard Brown, Director, Research, Service Sector Development and technical assistance capacity building at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to Mrs. Patricia Lewin, Senior Technology Officer, National Commission of uh, National Commission for Science and Technology, to my wife and colleagues, um, both Lorena Rivera, that will be elaborating for the, in detail around uh, different uh, work conducted in WIPO uh, through the Global Innovation Index, and Carol Simpson, um, um, my uh, colleague from the Latin American and Caribbean uh, division that was uh, working with you in putting in place the elements for this meeting of today. Let me use a few initial messages uh, before getting into the substantive discussion of the meeting of today that I know is exactly what you are looking forward. But let me say a few things. One at the worldwide level, second at the regional level, and one related to the case of Jamaica. At the worldwide level, allow me to highlight a few elements. The first one is the fact that the global economy has been struggling in a very important manner to sustain high economic growth rates and creativity and innovation have been playing a very important role on what has been taking place at the worldwide scale in order to keep that um, high growth rate that I mentioned before. But this has not prevented the world from experiencing unseen levels of innovation and creativity. And both firms and countries around the globe recognize that innovation is key to corporate strategy and to economic growth. Accordingly, over the last decade, innovation activities such as research and development and intellectual property filings at the worldwide scale have been growing faster than GDP. 
just take a look of the effort that have been both countries and firms doing in terms of research and development of the unprecedented level of filing in the field of trademark or in the field of patents at the international level to see how both innovation and patent and IP filings in general have been growing beyond GDP growth. In this context, the global innovation index have been impactful on three fronts. The first one, for policymakers, the global innovation index is routinely refers um, when it comes to the formulation of economic policy strategies. Increasingly, innovation and intellectual property are linked to central economic policy objectives in a very mutually reinforcing way. And we in WIPO recognize those efforts. And because of that, the specific area of national IP strategy is going to be a key element of the work of the sector that have been used recently created on IP and innovation ecosystem. Second, innovation actors use the EII to improve innovation performance, investing resources in establishing cross ministerial task forces to analyze the EII results and design policy responses. And third, by incentivizing the collection of innovation metrics, the GI aims to shape the innovation measurement agenda. Under this context, you can imagine that the priorities of the World Intellectual Property Organization and those that have been indicated by the new Director General, Dr. Darren Tan, in order to place innovation and to place IP as a key element to foster economic growth is at the very high level of the World Intellectual Property Organization agenda. An entire new, system, an entire new sector has been created, the IP and innovation ecosystem sector, the one I am leading to deal with those matters. Secondly, at the level of Latin America and the Caribbean, allow me to say, use very few words because all the uh, uh, meetings are going to address the Caribbean perspective, uh, mainly uh, tomorrow. The event of today is a testament to the fact that the development um, of policies both in developed and developing economies is extremely important and getting more and more relevance um, in all jurisdictions world, worldwide. And monitor innovation performance, those included in the Global Innovation Index is without doubt a key. More than 40 national and regional GEI events have taken place since the launch of the GEI 2020 in September 2020. Um, many of those closely organized with regional and um, international organizations. And let me say that we are extremely pleased to be today partnering with Inter the Inter-American Development uh, Bank. And we are going to be looking forward for many more of these partnerships. And in the case of the Caribbean, and in the case of Latin America, Jamaica in particular is giving the right level of recognition to both the Global Innovation Index, how to get and collect data in terms of innovation in finding out the place of the country in uh, the indicators uh, we, are, we are producing. But let's leave for tomorrow discussions at the regional level. Let me say a few words about Jamaica. My colleagues 
will always elaborate further in detail about Jamaica innovation ecosystem. So I will not get into those deta details. But two spoilers deserve my attention. The first one, Jamaica ranks 72 in the Global Innovation Index 2020. As such, it is the leader in the Caribbean in terms of in its innovation ranking. But more important, it went up to this level rank of 72 coming from the 81 rank in 2019, what shows that the efforts the country have done are giving results. Second, Jamaica is also the only Caribbean country that outperforms on innovation relatively or related to the level of development as measured in the GII. Indeed, only in the region, Costa Rica and Jamaica outperform. And this is an extremely important indicator of what is happening um, in the country. The strong creative sector of Jamaica and the strong performance in, in areas as trademark and design are undoubtable and assets. If you see the inputs of the Global Innovation Index, you will see that in creative outputs, the rank is 42. And in the institution, the rank is 42, helping to improve the overall rank to the 72 level. Probably areas like, like knowledge and technology outputs deserve policy attention and some of the actions taken, like those related with the accession and multi to multilateral treaties, like the PCT, probably goes into the right direction. But allow me to say that the GEI give attention and particular important attention to the creative sector. So although GEI refers to the Global Innovation Index, the element of creativity is at the centric of the collection of data, the metrics, and what the index would like to reflect. So finally, to close, allow me to congratulate all those involved in this activity, in particular, JIPO, the Inter-American Development Bank, and the other authorities that join this exercise uh, because certainly is work is very worth to give the necessary policy attention to both the role of IP on innovation and the role of innovation in terms of economic growth. So I wish you all the best in this exercise, and I will be attentively following the discussions. So all the best, and thanks again for the invitation. No, thank you so much, Mr. Marco Aleman, uh, for, for your words, and also Lorenzo Escondur, and also Ms. Lily Claire Bellamy. Thank you all so much for, for your opening remarks. And now we will get into the meat uh, of the discussion and presentation. Um, all of our speakers have alluded to the Global Innovation Index. So what we want to do now is to dive into it, to get a better understanding of what it is, how we measure it, and Jamaica's performance, particularly on that innovation index. Right before I get to Lorena, I wanted to do a few housekeeping so that we understand the structure and the rest of the agenda. So this is a closed invite only um, event intended to encourage open dialogue amongst a small group of key stakeholders uh, in Jamaica regarding innovation. Tomorrow will be our public event, um, the day two that will be open to the full public and which will have a much wider viewership. But here we really want to encourage discussion today. And so we will be stopping recording uh, when we get to that point of discussion. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, I would like to encourage everyone to please open their cameras. This is to support our engagement uh, and that we're interacting with each other. Let's pretend we're actually in a room where we're um, uh, talking to each other uh, in a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, it, it helps sometimes that, that we're seeing each other, um, especially in this virtual world, it, it can be very 
um, inhuman. <laughs> um, and the agenda for the rest of the day, just in case you have not seen it, uh, we're starting out with a presentation of the GIA by Lorena Rivera Leon. Um, we will then move into a roundtable discussion that's going to take place for about 20 minutes. Participants here have been pre-selected. They include uh, Honorable Minister Audley Shaw, Ms. Patricia Lewin, and Dr. Shara Watson, who will be sharing some thoughts and inputs. Thereafter is when we will have an open question and answer section. And this is where I encourage everyone here, pose your queries, your thoughts, your inputs following the presentation and also the discussion points. In order to do that, please raise your hands using the tool. I'll then acknowledge you and we can open our mics to speak. So great. Thank you guys so much. We're starting a little bit late, but we're hoping to get back on time. Lorena, don't feel rushed, but passing it over to you. Thank you, Kyla. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be here with you to present some of the results of the GII 2020 on Jamaica. Uh, thanks a lot for the organizers, the ITV, JIPO, and my colleagues at WIPO. Um, I will be presenting uh, the results. Kyla, do you mind sharing the presentation? Yes, forgive me. No worries. <laughs> So let me say, say a few words about, um, about the GII to begin with. Um, I think Marco went a little bit into the details on why we're, um, you can go to the next slide, Kaira. Um, I think slide three, the next one. Yeah, this one. Um, I think um, Director Aleman, um, made an emphasis on the rationale of the GII and why we're doing this. So basically, the main idea behind the GII is really to make an impact as a policy making tool. So we want, uh, you know, the headlines of the rankings are of course what attract a lot of attention, but we're particularly interested in on enabling countries to assess not only their performance, but a better understanding of their innovation ecosystems through data. So basically, um, what Marco said that policymakers are using more and more the GII to guide their innovation strategies and their economic strategies is one of the main collaterals of the index. So we want uh, countries to use this, uh, this tool exactly in this way to enable their better understanding and to make policy decisions based on facts and data. Um, and as a consequence, you know, there is this more holistic view of innovation, taking into account that innovation, you know, goes into the spam of economic policies that can be trade policy, uh, industrial policy, but also very linked to, to education, to investment in R&D and so on. So indeed, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of collateral impact in the collection of innovation data. So from all the years we have been working with countries, they have actually realized that collecting data in a periodic way uh, allows them to better understand their ecosystems and to better benchmark themselves against other countries. Uh, so if we move to the next slide, Kyla. And um, what Marco was saying as well is this holistic view of innovation we try to give uh, in the GII. And I think if anything we have learned from the past year of pandemic is that innovation can take many different ways and that it's a very complex phenomenon. And we try in the best possible way to measure that. And uh, what you're seeing in this slide is our measurement framework. So basically, uh, we recognize that uh, innovation can not only be technocentric. There's, you know, the ecosystem is actually influenced by the institutions, by the political environment, by the regulatory environment. Uh, but also is very much impacted by the availability of human capital, by the investments in R&D, by the quality of the tertiary education, and pretty much uh, modeled by the infrastructure and by how sophisticated the markets are and the businesses are. So all of that is on your left hand side, so all the inputs to innovation. And then uh, it, we have noticed over the years that those countries that rank relatively well in the GII are those that are able to actually translate all of those inputs in efficiently into outputs, so into results. And for this, we have um, different measurements of outputs, but it's everything related to knowledge creation, the impact of this knowledge, the diffusion of this knowledge. And as Marco also said in the beginning, 
um, we give a lot of emphasis to creativity. So we try to measure intangible assets as best possible. And also everything that is happening in terms of online creativity and uh, the creative industries to some extent by measuring creative goods and services and, uh, and, try to, and try to compare them around the world. So that's basically the framework to give you an idea. Uh, now to get, uh, to get into the detail, let's look at where Jamaica is positioned in the GII 2020. And for that, uh, you can move to the next slide. Yeah, from that, uh, basically I wanted to give first an overall view on where Latin America and the Caribbean is. So I think what this map is showing is basically the rankings of the different Latin American countries and Caribbean countries um, and the countries we cover. So first of all, we cover countries based on data availability. So all of those countries in the Caribbean that we cannot measure are because of the lack of data. And uh, one main finding in relation to the region is that, as you can see, disparities are large. So we have a lot of, we have a few countries basically that are always ranking on the top. And that is the usual suspects. So Mexico, um, Costa Rica and Chile. And then we have a second, a second group of countries um, where Jamaica is, um, is included, where are, we are more or less in the, mid, in the mid range of the innovation ranking. And then, you know, we have countries that go up all the way to the, to the 110th. So there's disparities. Uh, something we have observed um, over time as well is that uh, the region, when we look at the score, and the score is all of this aggregation that we do for the different uh, measurements, those pillars that I showed before, over time the score of the region has been decreasing. And what does, that means is that the performance relative to the rest of the world has been decreasing, which is completely opposite to what we observe in other world regions. And I think the best example here is the Asian, Asian economies. So we see some sort of a stagnation of the region. And I think that is, that is um, some, some key policy message that you know, policymakers in the field should, should hear. Um, Mark also said that um, Jamaica is indeed one of the countries that perform above, above expectations for the level of development, but the majority of the countries in the region are actually performing below expectations. Now, if we look at Jamaica's performance over time, and here I'm just looking at the last three years, we see that indeed in the, in the GII 2020, the ranking of Jamaica was, uh, was considerably boosted. And this is great news. Um, however, I think here, if you remember that, um, that framework before on the inputs and outputs, and you see there the rankings in this table, you will see that there's some kind of paradox there because Although the innovation, the ranking in inputs has been decreasing over time, the ranking in outputs has been increasing. So there's something, there's something about the investment in innovation that is not going the right way relative to the rest of the world, but is going in a great way in, in, in the way of translating these limited resources into outputs. So I think I will try to, I will try to explain what we can see on the data on what can explain this, uh, this paradox. And uh, what this means for Jamaica is that it's ranked in the 21st position among the upper middle income group and uh, seventh in the Latin American and the Caribbean region. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, sorry, um, I was struck. No worries. Um, yeah, in the next slide, I can see, I think we can see much more clearly what I just mentioned before. So in the GII, you see at the, at the very right hand uh, side um, table, Jamaica is seven in the region, in inputs is 10th in the region. And here I'm counting all Latin America and in outputs, uh, you remember that I mentioned this usual suspects. So Costa Rica, Mexico and Chile. So Jamaica is on the third rank in the whole region. So I think the, the, the performance of Jamaica is quite outstanding on this, on this part. Now we try to look in the next slide at where Central America is. I think Central America and the Caribbean, sorry, I think here the, the leading role of Jamaica is much more evident where you know, it, uh, the country is positioned in the very top, um, top scale. And you know, the other Caribbean countries that we cover in the GII, the Dominican Republic and Trinidad and Tobago, are, uh, are, are below Jamaica in all, in all cases, both in inputs and outputs. Um, if we move to the next one, I think what this, is like, this table is showing is basically 
what I mentioned before, so in relation to the stagnation of the, of the region. So if you see all of the countries here have been slowly increasing or slowly decreasing, but all around uh, the same kind of uh, ranges, well, Jamaica did um, a very large um, uh, jump in the GII 2020. So if we look at the next one, uh, and this is coming ahead to what was said in the introductory remarks. So what you can see here is this relationship between innovation and, and economic development. So there's no surprises here that uh, innovation leaders around the world are also the more developed countries. So this, this positive relation is well known in the literature. However, what we try to do in the GII is to recognize that countries have different uh, levels of development and should be acknowledged and measured um, in this, uh, within these differences. So this, uh, this chart is basically trying to, to see according to levels of development. So this trend line that you see in there in the, in the middle is what expectations uh, would, would uh, measure or where countries would be located according to expectations based on levels of development. So Jamaica um, and only Costa Rica are above this uh, expectations trend line. So I think this is very good news because it points out to the capacities of the innovation ecosystems to out actually outperform. Um, it also signals the regional advantages to some extent that the country has, because as you can see, only El Salvador and Honduras are um, performing according to expectations and all of the other countries in the region are below expectations. So once again, it's remarkable. Now let's try and dig into these seven pillars that I mentioned before. Um, so basically what we see in this, in this spider chart is the location of Jamaica relative to the income group level, to the region and to the innovation leaders. So you can see that the gap with the innovation leaders is quite large, but that is uh, to some extent expected. However, we also see that um, Jamaica is also performing quite well in a few of the pillars and that includes institutions and creative outputs. Uh, but also below uh, the region and the income group in some others. And I think the most notable cases here are infrastructure, our human capital and research, are our knowledge and technology outputs. So let's try and dig uh, more into in depth in there. So let's try start with the good news. <laughs> so let's look at the strengths. And I think here I wanted to highlight two, two parts of the ecosystem. I think one uh, key one is the institutions element. And what you see there, are these circles and, and, and triangles or shapes um, are basically uh, strengths relative to the world. So those are the circles and relative to the income group. And those are the shape uh, um, squares. So here, Jamaica is uh, basically um, performing quite well in institutions for their income group, but in particular for the world in the business environment. So this is something that I think has kept the policy, policy attention and it has delivered. Now in creative outputs, what I found very interesting, if we look at the output side, Jamaica is um, performing considerably well in intangible assets. And here, yeah, one could argue that this part of the ecosystem is very hard to measure, but I think this gives us a very good idea of, um, of the capabilities in the country. So if we go to the next slide, let's look at the indicator on trademarks. And this is, to, to, and this is trademark as a ratio of uh, GDP. Uh, this is certainly an, an opportunity for the country. So you can see here, trademarks was actually one of the indicators that explain an important, uh, that had an important effect of that advancement of the country in the rankings in 2020. So it passed from the rank 10th to the rank fourth, and this is fourth in the world. So I think it's quite remarkable. And if you see the rest of the, of the regional economies, they're, they're way behind Jamaica. So I think this is um, this an, an interesting finding. Uh, if you go to the next one, similarly, we see, we see something similar in, in relation to industrial designs, and this is, um, also as a ratio of GDP. And here we see Jamaica once again performing well above the income group, well above the basically very well placed in the world and rank 27 worldwide. And if you compare with other uh, Caribbean countries or Central American countries, it's certainly a, a, a national strength. Um, now, I wanted to touch also on a new metric that we use uh, from, 20, from the GII 2020, and this is the value of brands. 
And I thought this was, uh, since there's a lot of, uh, I know, discussions on your ecosystem, on, on creativity and the creative industries and so on, I thought it was interesting to highlight uh, this indicator. So also in brand value, and this is the value of the brands worldwide, uh, Jamaica is ranked the 20th in the world. And um, I think if you look at this chart, Jamaica is somewhere in the, in the uh, bottom left uh, quadrant. So that's the, the light blue. And there you can see when, when, I, when I was digging into the data, I realized you know, this is very much related to, the, to also the production structure and the export structure of the country. So obviously the, the spirits and the, and the food sector are, are pretty much leading here. So brands that are known worldwide, such as Captain Morgan, but also G. Gray and Gray and Nephew are really um, leading, leading in this regard. So it's something probably that, um, that is worthwhile for the ecosystem to have in mind. Now let's look at the weaknesses. And here the weaknesses, um, I'm also going to touch only on two of the, of the elements. One, I think it's um, a headache, if not a, a very a strong policy challenge for the whole region, is the human capital and research aspect. And in, in a specific, I think that the, one of the main messages I wanna highlight here is in relation to data availability. You can see there on the left side, a lot of the innovation metrics, and these are very classic or standard innovation metrics are, um, are missing for in the GII. And this is, you know, it's R&D intensity, it's the number of researchers, is graduates in science and engineering and so on. So I wonder first if, there is actually, if what we're actually able to measure is characterizing well the ecosystem, or if this is, you know, a data artifact, simply because we cannot measure it, we can actually you know, make, you know, cannot make an assessment. So I think that's the first message. Um, now, what, it, what I will show in the next slides, I will give a message on, on, on also the lack of investment in this field for the, for the country and for the region as a whole. Um, now, if we look at the output side, so one, one, the left is the input, the, the right is the, uh, the output. I think what was mentioned, mentioned also in the introductory remarks, one of the weaknesses of the, of the country, and again, of the region as a whole, is this labor productivity growth, which has been stagnating for, for decades now. So I think that's also uh, important to have in mind. But also when you look at the, at the production and, uh, and here I'm talking about this manufacturing uh, indicator, but also the high-tech exports that you see in the knowledge diffusion pillar. I think here what we see is um, you know, a reflection of the export structure that is very much concentrated in a few sectors that are not highly technological. So here I'm talking about you know, tourism, uh, uh, ICT services, but also you know, the food, uh, and, and food and drink sectors. So I think this is uh, another of these um, uh, high level messages. Now let's touch up, up on the um, human capital and research. So what I wanted to show here is this indicator. So these bars are basically the sums of the different indicators we have um, um, in the GII. So basically the main message here is just to say that Jamaica is uh, very much at the bottom. So there's a need to put policy attention on these inputs to innovation and invest in uh, human capital and research. And, uh, and the similar here, so when we look, and I know this is you know, in, a, in a, an absolute term, so one should, shouldn't expect that the productivity, the scientific productivity of the Caribbean country should be compared to the world. But what we're observing here is very low levels of scientific productivity in absolute value, but also in the scale value once you see it in the rankings. Um, if we move to the next one. Uh, here, I just wanted to touch up on the, the creativity industry, the creative industry, sorry. And, uh, and by highlighting one of the pillars in, two pillars in the, in the pillar on the creative um, outputs. So basically here, again, we have a measurement uh, problem because there's a few indicators that are not available, but also, you know, some of the indicators we measure are more related to trade. So cultural and creative services, for, but also creative good exports. And I think these low levels that we observe here can point to this as relatively small uh, sharing total trade of the creative industries, but also it pointed out to a potential need to actually give all the policy attention to, to firms. Because if we were seeing that uh, there is potential by all of those metrics that I presented before, but this is not really translating into, into outputs, 
is mainly because there is this, um, you know, this gap into what the firms are able to actually translate into the markets. So for here, I think we're going back to the to this paradox. So for that to happen, we need appropriate financing for scaling up. And uh, something that, uh, you know, given the other indicators where Jamaica is well placed uh, in the use of ICT uh, services, but also imports and exports, uh, there is a potential for, us, for also using actively information technologies to support this process. So just to, to close very quickly, I think I just want to, uh, I don't want to touch upon more policy implications. I think just want to, I just want to close into, into just, um, highlighting the importance of collecting and updating innovation data as you as you saw there's a few missing gaps in there and i think there's a lot of opportunities for improvement and i think it is possible it, i mean we, we cannot make progress towards making that uh towards improving the innovation performance if we cannot measure it properly but uh, I'm looking forward to the discussions in the next block and to see if the people or the stakeholders in the ecosystems can actually recognize some of these features that we can observe in the data. So thanks a lot for the, for the invitation and the opportunity. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lorena, for this input. Uh, the GII provides uh, a lot of information and data that we can really dig into into more detail. Uh, but let's go ahead and move into the next section um, of our agenda in order to start off a discussion um, about what has been presented here and to see what sort of policies that the, the country is implementing and discussions on where we can create complementarities and synergies and partnerships as well. So um, without further ado, um, I would want to remind uh, that this session is slated for about 20 minutes for a little bit over time. So each participants have about five minutes to speak. I will be timing it and I'll provide a gentle reminder after which you would have about one to two minutes to wrap up your statement, okay? So if we can please go ahead and, and uh, start with the honors, Honorable uh, Minister Audley Shaw. Um, of the minister, who is the Minister of Industry, Investment, and Commerce. Honorable Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, let me first of all just say good morning to everyone and uh, recognize all the representatives of the uh, Inter-American Development Bank, and of course the World Intellectual Property Organization, as well as our local Jamaica Intellectual Property Office. The government of Jamaica is pleased to be participating in this very important and timely meeting to review Jamaica's performance on the Global Innovation Index 2020 and to discuss opportunities for Jamaica to strengthen the intellectual property ecosystem to incentivize and drive innovation among the public and private sectors to facilitate economic resiliency and growth in Jamaica. In the Global Innovation Index 2020, Jamaica has moved up nine places to hold the 72nd position across the upper middle income countries as it relates to innovative capabilities, ranking seventh among the 18 economies in the Latin America and the Caribbean, and performance performing above average in three out of the seven G2 pillars institutions. Business sophistication and creative output for the first time in uh, the, the G2, Jamaica was recognized as an innovation achiever. Jamaica ranked in the top 80 innovative countries in the world in 2020, compared with being in the top 100 in 2019. This recognition uh, of Jamaica as the only innovation achiever in the English speaking Caribbean, exhibiting innovation above expectations relative to our level of development. The government of Jamaica recognizes 
that an efficient intellectual property system is a necessary prerequisite to spur innovation as a catalyst for economic development. The government has recognized the importance of a modern intellectual property regime as critical to striking a balance between the interests of innovators and the public interest, providing an environment in which creativity and invention can flourish for the benefit of everyone. Intellectual property rights allow innovators to protect their core business, research and development activities. The entrepreneur can register their trademark to build brands and increase the value of the brand. They can register their designs, their songs and artwork as copyright works and protect their invention through patents. Jamaica is on the verge of bringing into operation the Patents and Designs Act 2020, which will see Jamaica's accession to the Patent Cooperation Treaty and the Hague Agreement concerning the international registration of industrial designs. The Trademarks Act is also being amended to pave the way for Jamaica's much anticipated accession to the Madrid Protocol, something that has long been advocated for by Jamaican MSMEs. We are also developing new legislation to protect the intellectual property rights of breeders of new plant varieties. Indeed, intellectual property is a major driver and indicator of innovation. In fact, the Trademarks Act will be approved in parliament today. I opened the debate last week and I'm closing that debate this afternoon, God willing, okay? Intellectual property is counted as an asset when determining the value of a company and can even be used as collateral for a loan. There's a focus on the monetization and the commercialization of innovation, inventions and intellectual property. JIPO is currently leading a project funded by the Inter-American Development Bank and the Caribbean Development Bank titled Strengthening the IP Ecosystem to Increase Innovation, Competitiveness and Growth in MSMEs in Jamaica. The project seeks to strengthen the IP ecosystem in Jamaica by helping to create the conditions for IP commercialization and collateralization so that MSMEs can effectively leverage their IP assets and obtain financing. This in turn will help to increase their competitiveness and foster innovation, which will contribute to economic growth. The project involves training in IP valuation, the development of a roadmap and action plan for IP collateralization and monetization, as well as the design of a financial product, which or products which can incentivize increased lending to innovators by financial institutions in Jamaica. As the government of Jamaica, we recognize the importance of providing financing to incentivize and stimulate innovation. The government of Jamaica allocated $540 million in this fiscal year for the access to finance for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprise projects. This project is geared at improving the availability of financing for MSMEs and is being implemented in partnership with the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development and funding agency, our local agency, the Development Bank of Jamaica. So the government of Jamaica also recently signed an agreement with the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, under the Boosting Innovation Growth Entrepreneurship Ecosystems, BIGEE program. Under the BIG program, thousands of MSMEs will be supported for innovation, growth, patent development, and commercialization, among others, at the individual and group level at all stages of the firm cycle. The development of a culture of innovation 
is critical to the growth of the Jamaican economy and will only be achieved by increasing the understanding and registration of IP rights, as well as the monetization and commercialization of innovation, inventions, and other intellectual property. The aim of the government in that regard is to bolster the capacity of support institutions, public and private, to nurture, accommodate, and grow local innovation. And as I wrap up, as a government, we are committed to creating and maintaining an enabling environment where innovation can increase, innovators can thrive and grow their enterprises, and the national economy resulting in continued improvement and ranking of Jamaica on the Global Innovation Index as we con continue to, to strive to create prosperity and wealth for our people. Thank you very much. Excellent, and thank you, Honorable Minister. Congratulations also as well. Uh, this is exciting news. This, this is great on the trademark act. So congratulations uh, to you and your team on that. This is absolutely wonderful. And thank you so much for your remarks. Thank well, you. that Madrid protocol, you know, the um, Madrid protocol, which is a trademark act as amendment, that has been sitting around since 2013. So we are happy that at the end of this very day that I'm speaking with you, we are passing it in Parliament. Celebrations for popping champagne. <laughs> Definitely. Congratulations. Wonderful, wonderful. Exciting news. Great. So we will now uh, pass it over to two more persons to, to speak. Uh, I would like to call on Ms. Patricia Lewin, who is the Senior Tech Technology Officer at the National Commission for Science and Technology. Uh, Ms. Pat Patricia, if you would go ahead, please. I'll set the timer for about five minutes for you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Honorable Minister, um, colleagues, um, and other and other. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Yes. Great. Thank you. So, good morning again, honorable colleagues. Um, Miss Lily Claire Bellamy members of the IDB and all other protocols observe. I just want to thank you for this opportunity to share in both your celebration of IP Week, as well as um, use this opportunity to draw attention to the national policy, um, well, the national science and technology innovation policy, catalyzing national development, um, which is a policy it's, it's at a green paper stage, and we're looking to, um, to improve that status to white people very soon. So this policy sets out um, a framework of action for Jamaica to achieve by 2029, 20, 2030, uh, a dynamic S, um, science, technology, and innovation culture, unleashing the creative potential of our people, catalyzing economic development and sustainable prosperity, contributing to social transformation, empowering Jamaicans to excel in an, in, in an evolving world and contribute to a global frontier of science. So the policy wants to achieve a lot of things. And I believe it's possible with partnership. I believe it's possible um, if we are able to um, achieve some level of policy co cohesion and of course, um, we are moving in the direction of the um, Vision 2030 um, uh, relative to the outcome, um, a technology enabled society outcome 11. Um, the new green paper, the new policy is really a departure and an upgrading of the national science and technology policy of 1990. Um, and like the GII, this new policy will set to capture innovation input and output um, of, 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 of a multidimensional um, nature uh, as it relates to innovation um, by improving our planning and decision-making in GOG. And in order for us to do that, like the GII, we are interested or we are focused on improving 
or data collection capacity. So on the pillars of the GII, the institutional, the human capital research, infrastructure, market sophistication, business sophistication, knowledge and technology output, and creative output are, are exactly in line with um, areas of, 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 of our development that we want to improve. So the policy will, among other things, address um, the support of GOJ public sector, um, especially as it relates to transforming infrastructure, um, leveraging our national nat natural assets and traditional knowledge, in addition to supporting the various stages of innovation, including the exploitation of domestic IP assets through, through promoting entrepreneurship, as well as the popularization of science, technology, and innovation with and among local stakeholders. Um, we hope that the policy will address, and I use words like hope because um, it's, a, it's a big task, um, but we're hoping that the policy will address the associated pace of technology um, integration and knowledge transformation um, through the promotion of R&D, and like the minister said, the incentivizing of technology adoption, and of course, this improving um, our human capacity. Uh, I will just point out that there are two main goals that would speak to much of these improvements, and goal two- Quick note, sorry to interrupt, you have about one minute left. Thank okay. you. I'm wrapping up. So goal two, a culture of innovation, where Jamaica, in all private, public, and productive sphere, value the role of science, technology, innovation in expanding the base of wealth creation and improving the overall quality of life. Goal five, an enabling STNI policy environment. Jamaica has a dynamic policy, legislative, and institutional framework um, that capitalizes STNI. And I'll say this regarding the improvement of funding um, that the policy will seek to address um, inadequacy in funding, um, building, um, and, and so a, a thriving um, ecosystem around innovation and research and development. And lastly, that it's important that leadership part and partnership are critical to building this resilience that we seek as Jamaica has to foster and promote innovation um, uh, relevant to um, you know, the, the challenges that we're facing um, this time. So I thank you all. And um, again, congrats to JIPO and WIPO for staging of this and um, other events around intellectual property. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ms. Patricia, and congratulations to the, the Green a Policy, the, the Green Paper Policy. Let us know when that's out, please. Um, and handing it over now, finally, to Dr. Shara Watson, please, uh, excuse me if I mispronounce her name, who is the Executive Director of the SRC, the Scientific Research Council. Very happy to have you here today, Dr. Watson. Please go ahead. I'll start the timer for about five minutes now. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, Honorable Minister. Congratulations. Um, I know it's a long road most times, but we are there and I'm very, very happy and excited. Uh, Lily Claire and the team at JIPO, great work. You have been doing exceptionally well. And we, of course, are grateful to WIPO, IDP, and other international agencies that has been supporting Jamaica. So not to worry, I'll be very succinct. <laughs> um, so Marcus has asked me to, to really look at how can we continue to strengthen our innovation ecosystem here in Jamaica. Um, we have had great speakers um, since we started. We looked at our positioning according to the Global Innovation Index. We heard from the minister. We also heard from Patricia relating to the, the ecosystem that we are creating and the support system to facilitate a culture of innovation, which will be critical. Now we're putting in infrastructure, we're putting in resources, we're, we're developing policies and implementing. Um, but innovation comes from each and every citizen participating. So that culture innovation is critical. So one of the, the key things that I think will be important for us to continue on the path that we are on and to get um, the output that we are expecting, which is really a technologically advanced society that is prosperous and prospect, um, that is prosperous, prosperous and wealthy, we must um, engender that culture of solution finding, where it will be critical, 
speak to popularization a lot, but what do we mean? It's not just promoting, it's really engendering a culture of solution where from, from as young as you can walk, you start thinking about solutions to your problems. And how can we do this? Um, we must share success stories of Jamaicans innovating and finding solutions to our problems. It must be the common way that we speak. We must be able to highlight success stories, highlight innovations created by Jamaicans, um, whether it is here in Jamaica or elsewhere. We have to be able to see those examples if we're gonna believe that we can create and innovate and, and, and find solutions. Um, we are very good as it relates to, to developing food products. We are very good in the creative industries. And that's because we have been focusing on that. An entity like the Scientific Research Council, our mandate really specific to us was talking about looking at solutions for agro, agro, agricultural produce and agro processing. And we are focused on that. And you realize that Jamaicans, we are, we are developing a lot of new businesses and most of them are related to food. Why are we not a Silicon Valley? We have all the technology for us to be a Silicon Valley, but it's not what we speak about, it's not what is encouraged. So we have to really now broaden the, the landscape, broaden our minds as it relates to the kind of innovation projects that we can embark on and show real um, examples of persons being successful in these other areas, which will and um, encourage more people to participate in, in other area where innovation can lead to higher value um, outcome. And yeah, so I'll close it there. Thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the conversations uh, both today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Watson. You were right <laughs> about being straight to the point. Much appreciated. I love your emphasis on the culture and creating this narrative about what innovation is and how we can create that. That's very, very interesting. And so now what we want to move um, into uh, and really the exciting part for me and what I wanted to create a little bit of space for everyone for is to have our, it, on the agenda, it's question and answer section, uh, but I would like to call it a discussion. So please feel free. Um, you've heard from a few of our speakers um, uh, and as well the presentation uh, from the WIPO. I would love to open the floor now if you have any questions or comments that you would like to provide. Uh, if you could please open your camera, uh, especially when you are speaking, and please raise your hand. I will try to make sure that I uh, see it. Um, and you'll be able to do that through the Zoom, and then I will call on you. Of course, Honorable uh, Minister, let's start, with, um, let, let's start with you, Honorable Minister Shaw. Please go ahead. Thank you. I just want to say one, one thing, because it's been been very topical and in my own sectoral presentation in parliament last week, I made the point, but I think it is, it is significant enough that I should repeat it here. Jamaica has been in a situation of no growth or low growth for far too long, okay? And the irony of it is that we are coming out of a period when we were in independence, we had high levels of growth. We were averaging 6% growth in the 1960s. 1971, we grew in one year by 11 and a half percent, okay? Now we are in the 1%, 2% kind of region, and it is unacceptable. One of the reasons for it, however, are two problems, and they are, they are related to one another. Low productivity, lack of adequate competitiveness. They are fundamentally interrelated. And to, for us to get out of this low growth um, rut, we've got to get out of the low productivity rut, the low competitiveness rut. And to do that, we cannot do it without what we're talking about here today. It's central to our path to wealth creation. Absolutely, and very much on point. Innovation is a critical variable uh, in order to get us out of that productivity 
rut and to spur economic growth. Completely agree. Thank you so much. Um, I saw that Patricia, you were waving at me. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, you're on mute. Now we can. Yeah. Hear you. Yes. yes. Um, I just want to seize the opportunity um, that we have here with the minister um, to ask the question. As I mean, a very good point, minister. Um, but I think one of the things that we haven't done really in Jamaica is focus on our on 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 research, not just scientific research, not just. Um, investigative research, not just research for developing um, new, te not new technologies or new ways of doing things, but really our social science research and marrying that with our scientific research. Because for example, we could decide that we're taking a measure locally. However, we have no substantive data, no substantive um, research findings that will support um, the direction in which we go. And one of the things that we have struggled with is financing research, financing any type of research. So the commission, the National Commission on Science and Technology has been um, calling for greater levels of partnership, calling for a national fund to promote research and development, as well as to strengthen our capacity to collect um, data, indicators um, related to R&D, but also relative to innovation. And we have not had that coalescing. If, um, we have ministries doing that, one ministry doing that, one agent, but there's no sharing of resources. And can I, we can, I make a, can I make a suggestion? Because this is such a vital point you've made. And I'd like to, I don't want us to just say it, and drop it again, right? I'd like you to maybe send something formal to me with your suggestion about how we can, you know, get it formalized rather than being incidental. And let me tell you why I'm latching on to what you said so quickly. History, at my age, history is very helpful, right? And guess what? When I was in college and working yeah, subsequently, I came up with a concept called the race formula. The race formula. What is the race formula? Research, action, communication, and evaluation. And evaluation becomes the next phase of research. So you see how critical research is? Please send me a proposal. Thank you very much. I'll discuss it with the prime minister. Excellent. I am going to start using that, the race formula. I, <laughs> I made sure I wrote that down. Uh, I'm going to steal that from your minister, if that's OK. <laughs> that's all right. Just, just remember the, uh, the, the uh, origin. Of course, my. Let's give it's it a short, so I'll make sure to do that. Minister is more polite. Make sure. <laughs> no problem. Definitely. We have about five minutes left before we do close out. I wanted to open the floor if anyone else um, uh, within this session uh, had any questions, particularly from the presentation Lorena did, or any other thoughts and inputs uh, with regard to to what the minister Patricia and also Dr. Watson has shared. I don't know, uh, Mr. Dennis Booth or Harold Davis. Thank you guys for having your cameras on, so I'm picking on you. <laughs> um, Kayla, can I make an intervention? Definitely. Because I think it's important as the intellectual property office for us to recognize the work that Minister Shaw has done. And for actually for him to have joined us this morning is quite significant. And I don't think we should allow it to pass without acknowledging and thanking him for uh, being really supportive of the Intellectual Property Office. As he mentioned, we have the amendments to the Trademark Act, which will allow for the Madrid Protocol to come into effect, which is really going to make a significant difference for innovators and persons who contribute directly to our economy and the growth of Jamaica. This is really very important. And Minister, I want to state in this open forum that we appreciate your support, the support of the permanent secretary, 
and the other members of the team at the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. And also to recognize your willingness to assist the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology, because as you have always articulated, we're together and we need to collaborate so that Jamaica will be the beneficiary. Um, I mean, Pillar, it's really important and the support that we have received, not only from the World Intellectual Property Organization, but from the Inter-American Development Bank. As Minister mentioned in his speech, the program that we're embarking on, which JICO is embarking on in terms of being able to have people use their intellectual property and having it valued so it can be used as collateral is critical to us moving our economy ahead. Because as was recognized by WIPO during IPD, the micro, small and medium-sized enterprises contribute quite significantly to not only our Jamaican economy, but the global economy. So for them being able to access financing is critical. And for the banks and financial institutions to be able to effectively value IP is important. And the valuation training, which is going to be starting on the 31st of May, is really a first step in that way. And I look forward to the day when Minister Shaw is able to say the Security Interest in Personal Property Act is relevant. It can be used and we can value the IP and persons can get loans to be able to advance their business because we in Jamaica can value intellectual property and use it as collateral. So I just wanted to openly thank Minister and his team for the support that they give to us because we are, I'm, I'm biased to say, we are the foundation of everything that grows. So thank you. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you too. Um, yes, tell them thank you too. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, thank you, Lily Claire. I, I most certainly echo that. Echo that, um, Honorable Minister Shah. It has been an absolute pleasure working with Jaipo. They're very hardworking. They're doing a lot in the ecosystem, um, and they keep on me <laughs> in terms of the projects that we have with them. It's it's very novel. Uh, there, I, I only know maybe one or two countries in the world that's even looking at how IP can be utilized by the MSME. So I really want I'd to. Like, by the way, I'd like you to convey to our friends at the IDB how much we appreciate their support because um, um, it brings back memories for me when I was Minister of Finance between 2007, 2011. And after that, 2016 to 2018, one of the things I embraced was a, a, a healthy reconnection with the IDB. And I'm, I'm very proud of that history. Um, and the IDB now is a strong, firm, and irrefutable partner for us in Jamaica. So convey my, my thanks and best wishes to the IDB. Wonderful, thank you, and I shall do so. Uh, I'll make sure Therese knows. <laughs> Great. So um, um, Dr. Watson made a comment. Maybe we can close off with, with Dr. Watson, uh, the comments in the chat, and then I will hand it over to Lily Claire to do closing remarks so that we may close out today's webinar. Dr. Watson. Oh, okay. Uh, it was just um, something to, to really clear for consideration. Um, we are all familiar with the Bank of Jamaica advertisement around low inflation or inflation. Persons are wondering, what is this about? The average person in Jamaica don't even know inflation or how it affects them. But it was very, it, was, it, it, it stimulated public interest. Public started speaking about it and we learned a lot more about um, inflation. In a similar way about IP, some persons think IP is just patent. They don't fully understand what it is. And even though they will speak it and say IP, they don't fully understand. Maybe a similar kind of public campaign around um, IP, the value of it. And I'm saying it here with the Honorable Minister, because who knows what kind of financial support you might get to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you for allowing me to raise my 
Most certainly. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Okay, great. And so we will close out now. Apologies. It's Marcus, um, Dr. Marcus Goff, that will be doing closing remarks. Dr. Goff? Uh, we're not hearing you. There we go. Put on the headset. <laughs> uh, still not hearing. No. You might have to run over to um, Lily Claire's office. I think it's Marco. okay now. Oh, no, 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 no. We're hearing it's you. It's okay. <laughs> Great. Perfect. I was enjoying uh -huh. the um, discussion, so I didn't have on yeah. the, the headset, you know, but. Um, it, it's really been a very interesting and stimulating discussion, you know, even though I knew of Jamaica's performance in the GII last year, just uh, hearing and listening and seeing the presentation by Lorena, I think was really stimulating and encouraging. It makes us feel as if the work that we're doing is paying off, you know, and so I think that's really the message this morning that I would want to share with our colleagues that, you know, sometimes we labor in the trenches and we don't always see the results immediately. But when we do get the accolades and we see the results, we should just take the time out to acknowledge it and to see what we're doing uh, right and where we can also make improvements. So um, I too want to thank the WIPO and the IDB uh, you know, for the webinar, for this forum. And I, I really want to thank all of the hardworking um, ministries, departments and agencies you know, and members of staff or technocrats or hardworking MSMEs as well, you know, who of course, Again, times are challenging and we don't have it all right, but I think that we have certainly displayed the potential to do much more. And um, I'm feeling much more encouraged, again, as I say, you know, by this discussion. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow's more public discussion where we can highlight these achievements and also try to stimulate and inspire our um, wider stakeholders, because I think it's really a time for us to just coalesce around this, to build more partnerships, you know, within government, and in the public and private sector spaces as well, because it's only by concerted effort we can really make some progress uh, in this global innovation index ranking. You know, we have a lot of potential, as we always know. You know, when I heard Lorena talking, um, you know, I'm I'm again just hearing back what we always tell ourselves that we lick about with Talawa. You know, we 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 punch above our weight, and uh, that's what Jamaica is known for. And I think sometimes we think it's only in certain sectors, you know, sometimes we don't see ourselves as being all that in science and technology and innovation. But I think that, you know, the more we can see ourselves in the mirror that we are, in fact, inherently a creative people, we can really achieve and succeed much more, you know. So thanks to all again this morning for your attendance. We look forward to engaging you again, not only tomorrow, but moving forward on this issue uh, as we try to get the ecosystem strengthened towards innovation uh, for Jamaica's progress. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Goff. Once again, uh, acknowledgement and thank you to Honorable Minister Adlai Shah for being here. It was an absolute pleasure to, to have you with us in this forum uh, and this discussion. Thank you again, Lorena from the WIPO for your presentation. Excellent work, Lily Clear. Uh, Marcus we, uh, from the JIPO that we've been working together, Carol from the WIPO as well. Dr. Watson, uh, Ms. Patricia, thank you so much for your statements and remarks. Uh, today. And everyone, pleasure. Hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, if you're able to join tomorrow, we look forward to having you. We'll be focusing on the Caribbean, but also, of course, looking at uh, Jamaica as a case study to, to, to try to motivate uh, the, the rest of our, our colleagues in the Caribbean. So we look forward to having you, your inputs, and hope you have a productive day. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Thank you, and blessings always. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, Minister. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Minister. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Thank you. Carol. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Kayla.